I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today you're going to learn how Trappy from TBS and Tyler Brennan from Race Day Quads got together and made it so nobody can ever steal smart audio ever again. And the way that they did it is by making smart audio an open protocol. Now you're probably a little confused now uh, because number one, Trappy's position has been for a very long time that smart audio belongs to TBS and that no one can implement it without uh, his, per well, permission isn't the right word. I don't want to misrepresent his position, but his position, as I understand it, has been that regardless of the legal status of, of smart audio, that he would prefer that people come work with TBS in order to implement smart audio. And many of his supporters see the logic in that, that that's just a polite thing to do. And as you may know, Tyler, Tyler Brennan from Race Day Quads didn't share that position <laughs> and, and released the Mach 2 video transmitter with smart audio in it without, without getting TBS's blessing. And some of you know the outcome of that as well. They, uh, they, they reverse engineered smart audio from Betaflight. They used the Betaflight implementation of smart audio as the basis. Uh, and turns out Betaflight has a bug in it with smart audio. No, that bug is not affecting anybody as of today. Everything works fine. It's a very, very small bug, but it turns out that when you build a smart audio implementation based on that bug, instead of based on the spec doc that TBS has, well, the gist of it is that when that bug is fixed, eventually when that bug is fixed, Smart audio won't work anymore on the Mach 2. Oh, did I just drop a bomb there? Yeah. So that has been on Facebook for a while, but if you're not on Facebook, this may be the first you're hearing of it. So let me set aside a minute the wonderful revelation about nobody stealing smart audio ever again and tell you about this bug. Smart audio on the Mach 2 has a bug in it. Um, the bug is not affecting anybody today. It works perfectly today. But it, when Betaflight 3.3 comes out, and that's going to be sometime in 2018, you saw how long it took Betaflight 3.2 to come out. Uh, sometime in 2018, Betaflight 3.3 is going to come out. And when that happens, this bug in Betaflight will be fixed. And as a result, the Mach 2 depends on that bug being there. So when it's fixed, smart audio on the Mach 2 won't work anymore. My, uh, Race Day Quads knows about this issue and is working with their manufacturer to fix it. The only reason I tell you that is because I, I know a lot of you bought the Mach 2, at least in part based on my uh, video about it. And... I feel somewhat responsible for your outcome of that. One of the outcomes of that, and I'll call it a debacle. It was a bit of a debacle. On the one side, you got people from Race Day Quad and Race Day Quad customers going, shit, what are we going to do about this? On the other side, you've got people from TBS and their supporters going, hey, eat shit, motherfuckers, and really having a great time. One of the outcomes of that debacle is that Tyler was like, hey, this, we can't let this happen again. We can't have the this really important protocol that everybody relies on being held by somebody who can just sort of say, nope, I'm cutting you off. It needs to be open. Isn't that what we're, we're all here for? And it turns out that there is, uh, there's this thing called open TCO, which essentially is like an open source version of smart audio. It's not based on smart audio. It's not ripping smart audio off. Calm down. It is just an alternative to smart audio developed some, uh, in parallel. Uh, and, and he was like, what about this uh, open TCO thing? Can we make this happen? Why is this not happening? What happened is that a whole bunch of people ended up in this chat room. Uh, I've got a list here on screen. There were Betaflight devs, Preston from Raceflight, um, iNav main developer, CleanFlight, Dominic from CleanFlight, Trappy from TBS. There's FreeSky. There's people representing FreeSky, Spectrum, Gropner, RunCam, BrainFPV. Uh, open TX devs, uh, guys from Iftron who make Clearview, guys from FPV Blue, and I, I, the only uh, the, one of the ones, and I'm calling it out in this video because I feel it's really important. I don't think, at least last I checked, that there was anybody from Kiss who was in this, and it's not for lack of trying. I was like, why isn't why aren't they here? And they're like, well, we've reached out, but we're not getting a hold of them. And if you're from Kiss and you're hearing this and you're going, why have I not been invented? I've been no. C come on, contact me, contact somebody, get in there. We, everybody should be involved. And all these guys are working on developing an open source. Frankly, I think it's going to be bigger than just an open source version of, of smart audio, but it's coming. They're working on it. 
and it's going to be pretty massive, I think. So, And what's most exciting about this to me is not just that there's this technologi uh, technological thing happening, which of course is exciting, but that all these people are working together instead of working at odds. And at the end of the day, I think everybody feels better when that's happening than when everybody is fighting. So that's very good. As far as smart audio goes, today uh, TBS has made the, the declaration that smart audio is an open protocol and anyone can implement it. That's official now. That's been my stance for a while. Well, I'm glad they came to a, Okay, that's the last time. It's open now and anyone can implement it. And what, what TBS has done in order to protect their interest in seeing a high quality, because that's always been their position, that, that it's not that they care so much who implements it, but as I see it, their position has been that they just want to make sure it's being done right and not being done shitty by people who will introduce a bug. What they're going to do is they've got a certification program. And way, the way it works is that manufacturers can submit their product to TBS and TBS will run it through a test and they'll test that it works right. I don't know how they do that, but presumably automation robots, I assume. And then they'll be able to like put a stamp on the product that says TBS certified. And then when you buy the product, you'll go, oh, it's TBS certified. I know that the smart audio implementation is going to work correctly. Or if you want to save a few bucks, you can buy a cheap cheap one from somebody who reverse engineered it and it, hey it'll probably work but it, we won't have the stamp you know so it's your call and that I think is awesome because ultimately like I've never had a problem with TBS being it being the gatekeeper in in that they say look this is good and we don't know about this right I just want people to have the option to buy what they decide they want to buy I'm getting myself in trouble here because people are going to interpret that as I support cloning and I believe in, uh, you know, anybody could just copyright anything or uh, counterfeit anything. And I don't, that's not my position. Specifically with regard to p protocols, um, I come from a networking background and I've seen this stuff play out in many other places. And I, I've just seen this go, go around enough times that I think that protocols should, should default to being free to implement. So, you know, if the response to shape and a haircut is two bits, that's not like something that you, hey, I own that. I own that. If you go shave and haircut, you can't go two bits back. That's a protocol, right? That you can't lock that down. The actual code that implements the protocol, that you can lock down. But open protocols are good for consumers. They're good for a market, promote a robust marketplace. But it's fine to have somebody who says, hey, we're going to be the ones who uh, certify this. And TBS is going to do that. So I'm really excited about this. I'm looking forward to seeing this. If you see some smart audio certified official video transmitters coming out, know that that has gone through TBS and they've guaranteed essentially that it's going to work right. And if you buy a video transmitter that doesn't have it, know that they haven't. And well, maybe it still works right. Maybe it doesn't. So that is what's going on right now in the, the world of smart audio and so forth. I, I hope that this whole thing can help uh, help quiet some of the conflict that's it's felt really uh, con conflicted lately. A lot of us versus them, a lot of people over on the TBS camp, I don't know, maybe I'm feeling it because they've decided I'm they've decided I'm the champion of the cloners. I'm not sure how I got elected the champion of the cloners, but I hope that this will uh, calm some of that down. These guys are working together. Uh, everybody seems to be being very polite, very nice and making a lot of progress. Um, it'll be a while before you see any manifestation of this working group. These things take time. But they asked, they actually asked me to be their sort of community representative to make announcements. I've, I have a, um, a written announcement that they prepared for me. I've, I haven't really read any of it, but I told them it was just to give me the gist. So that's going to do it for this video. Leave your comments down there. Let me know what you think of all this. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy flying.